Aloha and welcome back. Today's tips topic is how to write effective cover letters. Let's get started. So what is a cover letter and what is its purpose? A cover letter is one of the most important parts of a job application packet, but sadly, people sometimes don't take the time and effort to craft a really good one that will get the employer's attention and get you that interview. Simply put, a cover letter is a written statement introducing you to a potential employer. But much more than that, it details why you are interested in the position and specifically demonstrates how you meet its qualifications and are prepared for its demands. Importantly, it provides an employer with a first impression of you. It's often the first thing that they read, so make sure it's a good one. Cover letters are generally one to two pages in length, so you should carefully consider what you include within that limited space. Which work experiences, skills, and personal qualities would best show that you are well-suited for the position's duties and responsibilities? Finally, your cover letter serves as an opportunity to differentiate yourself from other candidates and to showcase what you would bring to the job if given the opportunity. That's all fine and good, but especially if you've never written cover letters before, you may be at a loss where to begin. Here are some cover letter organization guidelines to get you started. The salutation. Address your cover letter appropriately. You should peruse the job announcement for this. Does it provide a specific person to send the application to? If so, address your letter accordingly with the proper title. For example, Dear Dr. Schmidt. If no particular name is provided, you can use a general phrase such as Dear Search Committee or Dear Committee Members, since it's likely that a number of people will be reviewing your application. And please, don't use To Whom It May Concern. This comes across as impersonal and sends a signal that you couldn't be bothered to find out how to address your letter appropriately. Next is your introduction. Let them know briefly who you are, what position you are applying for, and why you are interested in it. It is a good practice to include the title of the position and or the job number. Sometimes an employer may be advertising for multiple positions at the same time, and it is helpful for the search committee to know the exact position you are applying for, so there are no mistakes. In the main body of your cover letter, you should address the position's minimum qualifications, or MQs, and the desirable qualifications, or DQs, providing relevant examples from your work experience or skill sets to demonstrate that you can handle the duties of the new position. If this feels overwhelming, especially if there are a lot of qualifications listed, try breaking things up. Pretend you are being interviewed about each qualification. What is the best example you can think of to show that you meet this qualification? Jot these down. Are there particular parts that go together? Your notes can help you craft and organize your eventual paragraphs. When you have finished showing how you are a good qualified candidate for the position, you just need to close your letter. Take this time to provide any other relevant information about you, mention how they can best contact you for any interview, and thank them for their consideration. Throughout your letter, infuse it with your writing style, but keep things professional and in business letter format. If all goes well, you will have a cover letter that gets you that all-important interview. Here are some additional cover letter strategies. In a variety of activities we typically do in tips, we ask participants to put themselves in the employer's shoes, to think of things from their perspective. What are they looking for? What do they need? What do they hope to accomplish through this position? Luckily, the job description and listed qualifications clue you into a good portion of that information, and a subsequent information search will reveal more. When writing your cover letter, it helps to be mindful of the employer and tailor your cover letter to focus on how you can meet their particular needs. This will typically pique their interest and garner closer attention. 
Related to the previous point, if you have conducted a good information search, you may want to incorporate some of that knowledge into your cover letter. For example, if one of the qualifications for a teaching position is to be able to work with a diverse student population, you might state something like, in my five years teaching ESL at University Z, I have worked with international students from across the Pacific Rim, but especially Japan, which is similar to your program where Japanese international students represent the majority. I am well aware of the key areas of language difficulty they experience and have helped my students overcome these hurdles in my classes, for example. And then you provide details from there. When writing your cover letter, be careful to watch your tone. You should objectively and confidently state all that you can do, neither overinflating nor downgrading your abilities. In cultures where humility is valued and emphasized, applicants may have a hard time talking about themselves and their achievements. It may not feel comfortable or natural. If that is the case, we recommend using objective facts or other people's words instead. For example, if one of the qualifications is about excellent teaching abilities, use quotes from evaluations from students, colleagues, or supervisors, with permission, of course, to describe your successes. Then it's not you who is talking about your abilities, but them. Sometimes other people's words will have a much stronger impact than anything we can say about ourselves, so this can be a very good strategy. Finally, if you have finished creating an electronic portfolio that is ready for public viewing, you may wish to include the URL for it at the end of your cover letter in case they wish to know more about you. Now let's talk about formatting. As mentioned previously, your cover letter should be in business letter format. When choosing a font, use one that is simple, easy to read, and professional, such as Arial, Calibri, Cambria, Garamond, Georgia, Helvetica, Times New Roman, or Verdana. You should avoid using novelty or script-style fonts, which can be hard to read. For font color, choose black, since it's the most professional-looking and easy to read. Font size can range anywhere between 10 and 12. If you will be submitting a hard copy of your cover letter, Consider using special resume paper or heavier paper, if it's within your budget, for a nicer feel. Don't use brash colors for your paper, which can look gimmicky. Stick to more neutral, off-white, easy-to-read color tones instead. You may want to use the same paper for both your cover letter and CV. And also, in case the hiring committee makes photocopies of your cover letter, do a test and make sure it photocopies well. Some nice paper with fibers or certain colors can make your text hard to read when photocopied. You may, however, find that many employers nowadays ask for documents to be submitted all electronically instead, so paper type may be a moot point. Just make sure your PDF files are, again, easy to read and professional looking. In sum, be sure your cover letter is one to two pages in length, is well organized, easy to read, and professional in tone, and expresses enthusiasm for the job. And make sure it addresses the job qualifications and employer needs with your applicable experiences and skills. Remember, your cover letter is an employer's first glimpse of you, so be certain it creates a good first impression and a clear picture of your value as a potential employee. Now test what you've learned and take the next steps. Take the quiz in the Think section to check your understanding of these concepts. Check out the resources in the Dig Deeper section for even more strategies and tips. Do the cover letter task in the Discuss section. Read the sample job and the three sample cover letters. Think about what works well and what does not in each letter. Participate in the discussion board by choosing one of the three cover letters and posting on what works well and what doesn't in the letter. And read what other participants have posted. Okay, 
Go to it. And thanks for listening.